This is the Making Waves Mindset Show with your hosts, Richard DiBiase and Dave Moskowitz. Learn from our journey as we share the ups and downs of being your own boss. Well, welcome everyone to another welcome. fine, spooky edition <laughs> of the Making Waves Mindset Show. Halloween weekend edition. <laughs> Halloween. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Making Waves Mindset Show, where we change your mindset, we make waves, and we take action. This is the show. If you have been following us, you uh, hopefully you've been following us from the beginning. Yes. And you've experienced our journey into business, into entrepreneurship, and you've seen us grow in the show alone. We've had some great guests. If you are following us and you have not left a review, shame on you. <laughs> we need your reviews, shame, shame, shame. please. We've uh, Dave and I have heard from you all privately, in person, in the DMs. Yeah. Please take a moment. We want to help the show grow and hit larger audiences. So if you would be so kind and felt some value or connection today, hit that subscribe, hit that review, hit the star rating, leave a beautiful comment on your YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Google, Apple, Amazon, any of the accounts that you follow the ones. <laughs> all of them. All of, all, we, of, all of the platforms. We would greatly appreciate it. We love all of you. And if you listen to an episode and you're like, nah, that one wasn't for me. Share it. Share it anyways. You never know who it's going to be for. Share the ones that you don't like. Share the ones you like. Leave those perfect reviews. Perfect. If you do like them. But help us out. Help us out. There's more people that need to hear this. There's more people that need to follow our journey. There's more people that need to experience what myself and Richard have experienced over the last year and a bit, almost a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. It's been a fun journey, you know, it the has. time to what Dave was saying, like the, the premise of the show when Dave and I got together was a whole different thing. And then we said, no, let's talk about our actual story mm -hmm. as we have left the nine to five, the ups and the downhill battles. And there are a lot of downhills, but there mm -hmm. are uphills and it ties in perfectly to what we want to speak about today because... Yes. We're on Halloween and there's fear. People get scared. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I got all the like studio in studio lights on me, Dave. I'm extra white like a ghost today. So the fear that people have that handicaps them from wanting to leave the nine to five. And um, it's actually funny. Side note. So I reactivated my Twitter. There's been a lot of excitement uh, at Twitter. So I'm like, I'm gonna get back into the and I had to come up with a really short bio, Dave, to put in there. And it was like, some I think it put something like stop living in fear or like, you know, escaping the nine to five, like it's the fear that we have to overcome. That's right. Yeah. If you, th you think about fear, so we got into this discussion just before we started recording was, what is keeping you at your corporate employment? Yeah. What is keeping you there? Well, there's a whole bunch of things that are going to keep you there because I know because I was and the things that kept me working for the corporation or other people was the fear of not being able to pay your bills. Yeah. The fear of being, being judged, being judged by family, friends that Peers. you don't that you're not working for a corporation. Mm -hmm. The fear of while you're working, not getting in trouble so you don't get oh fired. That's a big thing, especially in our line of work. Right? Yeah. The fear of not being able to support yourself, mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. That is, so you're living under constant fear. And that's not healthy. For no one. Not no. healthy for your mind, not, not healthy for your body, not stress, no. nothing. I would, I would say the biggest thing that I've had relief of is that fear not worrying about being in trouble, right? People use this trouble term when you're in the workplace. I don't want to get in trouble. I, I got yelled at today because I didn't do this right. Or my supervisor, yeah, my supervisor disciplined me or, we'll you know, <laughs> shares and brownies. There, there was a guy I used to work with Bill Rankin when I was with the city of Toronto, older guy. When I got hired in just uh, in 2000, I got hired. I ended up meeting him. He had been a 20, 
22 year employee at the time that I met him. Great guy. He unfortunately passed away in 2008. He had a heart attack. Oh, he, we worked together really well. He's, he was just this bigger than life guy. Six, six, two, six, three. He looked like a, a motorcycle biker guy. He, he, he rode a motorcycle. He looked like <clears throat> a, he was, he had this intimidating look, but he was also such a nice guy too, right? Just a teddy bear. If you got to know him. Um, and he had been in all the departments around the city of Toronto. So he had worked in like solid waste. He had worked in construction. Oh, wow. He had worked in parks. So every time we would drive around the city, he'd be like, oh, that, that, that curb, I actually built that curb. I remember oh, pouring the concrete gosh. on that curb. And yeah, he, he had so much history with the city. His line was, he was never afraid of discipline because he goes, the day that I get fired, they're going to, they're going to have to bring a, a forklift with my file to the office to show the amount of times I've been disciplined. He yeah. did not care. Yeah. And he it wasn't, he wasn't a bad employee. He was a great employee, great employee to work with, but he's, he, he took the opinion that he wasn't afraid of it. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to be disciplined because what is disciplining someone do? It shows that you've made a mistake. And if it's a serious discipline, then they're going to go down the road of firing you. But ultimately, it doesn't dictate who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't dictate. It's, it's a moment of time that you've made either a mistake that the corporation deems as serious or not. And it's their opinion of what happened in that circumstance. The keywords he, opinion, Dave. Right. You rattled the opinion of someone else who didn't exactly. like what you chose to do. And it could have been perfectly acceptable. Right. So he was never afraid. And that was the thing. That was something I admired of him because I was always at on edge when I was working for the city and working for the TTC. I was always on edge that I can't do this. I can't do that. Uh, I'm, you know, especially being uh, a special constable in my last position, I was always worried about, for those of you who don't know, when you're a special constable in Ontario, you have to renew your status as a special constable every five years. Oh, geez. So because you had to do that, I was always on edge of, oh, I can't get in trouble. I can't get, if I run a red light or if I don't stop at a stop sign long enough, if I get a parking ticket, if I get a speeding ticket, I was always on edge. So wow. when you're on edge constantly, your stress is through the roof. Yeah. And it's, it's by, and it's by design. Yeah. It's by design, these positions. So not only when you're, you know, not just speaking as a corporate employee, you're regulated by your supervisor, you're regulated by your manager, you're regulated by policies, you're, you're, you're regulated by the public, by the, and if you work for a public sector, you're regulated by the, the, the um, politicians. Mm -hmm. So you're under the microscope in these yeah. positions mm -hmm. in, in, in our, in our last professions of law enforcement. Yeah you have the magnifying glass on you. Mm -hmm. So the time. stress level and the fear every day that you go through is enormous. Once you leave that, that's when the pressure comes off. Oh, totally. Because then you're like, who cares? So I get a parking ticket. So I get a speeding ticket. It doesn't affect my life. I'm not out there committing crimes, robbing banks, you know, killing people. But it doesn't matter to me anymore. Yeah. It's not affecting me as a person in the way I do business. Yeah. If I get a speeding ticket, yeah. if I get a parking ticket, yeah. whereas before it, it consumed it, your, consumed your life. Yeah. It consumed your thoughts. Not to mention like even off duty. Exactly. Right? That's what I mean. Main. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Like as police officers, we, we were still held. Like I had this conversation literally this week with somebody who didn't understand why, you know, the police weren't present for certain things or even off duty to represent something they believed in. I said, it simply comes down to, you might bring the police service into disre disrepute. You know, it's the optics of you are doing something that somebody might not like off duty on your own time and it will be grounds for discipline because that's what can happen so talk about living like that and you know dave and i had a great conversation on this again as he mentioned just before the show because we have people we know in our lives who we have been teachers for who we've been mentors for who we've we've been role models for and they come for advice and there's a gentleman i'm, I'm kind of helping now and it's like but what is the fear about asking the question or just taking the action to do it, you know, and then the response is, well, it's money. 
well, money, yeah. money, money. How yeah. we're going to get, get my bills. I'm, you know, and I'm kind of like, well, a, there's more to life than money, but yes, I encourage everyone needs to be as wealthy and as, su as successful as they can in life, but there's more to life than money. So if you need to make that change, why are you letting this fear control and consume every aspect of your life? Like it's driving you nuts. Yeah. And then you're asking me constantly for guidance and advice. And we just keep going in the circle, Dave, you know, the circle of yeah, break that cycle of fear, you know, and, and I think it just paralyzes people. But it goes to what you were saying. The best thing that ever happened was when you moved on. Mm -hmm. Oh, no problem. I yeah. can move on anytime. Why am I here? Why am I letting fear hold me into this position? Right. And there, there's, you know, I don't want to take, I don't want to say it, it's all rainbows and lollipops. No. Right. There are, there are stresses when you move on. There's stresses in the process of moving on. And we've, we've covered those in our journey. Yes. And we've talked about the things that you need to prepare and work out. And the, there's things that you're going to stress about, but you don't have the fears that you do yeah. when you're working for a corporation. Yeah. And I would, you know, I'm, I'm going to put this out there to our listeners. If you feel that I'm wrong, if you say, wow, well, I have no fears, I have no stresses, put it, put it, let us know, send us a message. I'd love to hear your opinions on why you don't feel that you don't have any stresses of those fears in your workplace. Correct. I, I think there's something else that comes into play too. People don't feel that they have the confidence or the support to walk away from something right. to overcome yeah. that fear. And um, I've had this conversation with somebody and I've told her like, listen, you have people like Dave and I, you have mm -hmm. the podcast we're talking to you that we have been able to do these things and that can add as a level of support for you as you make that change. Remind yourself that there are other people who are ahead of you who have done this already and it can be done. So are you letting the fear of the judging? Is it the financial burden or is it just your own, you know, mental capacity and believing in yourself? Because that, that ties into the self-talk. I'm guilty of it too. You know, I'm not good enough. You're not this. No, right. change that you are good enough. You will accomplish this. And once yeah. you, once you, you know, crush that, that, that mental presence of believing in yourself mm -hmm. and that you can do everything, it makes a transition easier. Yeah. But if you still need that, find a mentor or coach, maybe making waves, Dave, we have to have our own <laughs> mindset consulting or coaching business, a part of the program. But if we can help, let us know, but find somebody who's doing something you want to do to yeah. help believe in yourself. Cause it's the confidence thing too, Dave, that can really push people yeah. into not wanting to go. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to go back to the grind every day, work the Monday to Friday, not mm -hmm. do what I want to do and let this ghostly fear paralyze yeah. you into to doing anything different. I, I actually have to give credit to a friend of mine who's recently opened up his own business and i i'm not going to take credit definitely not going to take credit for him actually doing it but i remember the initial conversations when he told me about the idea of it and i was still employed with him um and we were working in a corporate environment yeah. and he told me about this idea and i said look you got to do it open it up open it up now yeah and the conversations continued and continued and then when i left we continued those conversations and he got to the point where he's now launched a, a business and he, it looks like it's going to be very successful for him. That's incredible. He's, he's opened it up. It's moving along. It's um, it, he's in the process of, of growing it, but he's still, he's still transitioning, right? So he hasn't left fully the other job and he's just doing it on the side. And he's making it grow, 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 grow until it'll come to a point one day where he's able to leave that other position and move solely into that job. And then probably wonder why he didn't do it sooner. You got it. You got it. Right. I think I think the the biggest question for those right now struggling in fear is you need to understand why it's holding you back. So yeah. let's look at, OK, the worst case scenario of your fear. Matt, write it down. Like Dave and I were talking about this, I think it was the last episode. We're, we're kind of old school. We like to write things down. I kind of hate always going to my computer and phone and creating yeah. stuff. I prefer to write things down. Yeah. Literally write out the worst case scenario. So let's say it's, uh, we can, you can make it simple. You want to go to the gym and lose weight or you want to create a website. Well, what's the, what is the, the, the biggest fear of you opening that website? 
to launch a store? Like, what is it? Is it because you don't know where you're going to find, you know, 30 bucks for a hosting fee? Is it because you don't know if you'll generate traffic? Is it because you think nobody's going to purchase anything? Write it down. Understand that fear. And then write down what your best case scenario could be. Right. The website's going to explode. I can find $30 in my pocket to create the hosting services. I'm going to generate a whole bunch of leads to the business to get things going. And then and then it just changes the horizon. We always look for the negative, but not understanding what the other side of it. Yeah. And then the next step I think that we can do is once you have both scenarios, find maybe the middle ground. Make it easy for you and then break it down into a manageable step. We're going, okay, so what do I need to do to open that website? Okay, I need to go to a website domain hosting platform. Okay, okay, I can do that. Think of a website name. Okay, I think I can do that. See if it's available. Make the purchase. Once you start to break things down to these little tiny steps and you've understand the worst case could be this and this is the best case, it's going to give yourself that relief because you've actually really thought through instead of just washing it off that I can't just do it. I'm not going yeah. to be able to do it. Go explore it. Go do it. Otherwise, you're just continuing to live this ball of circle. And, you know, like I, I Dave, <laughs> we were kind of saying, Dave, the best thing that happened to us was leaving policing. Yeah. It was the best thing. Once that fear was gone, it was like, wow, yeah. why didn't we do this sooner? Mm -hmm. You can all do that. Can you imagine how many people right now that are sitting in a position, not just policing, emergency services, corporate, who are sitting in a position who have an amazing idea for a business, who have an, um, uh, like in the back of their head, they're like, I should be doing this business, but then convince themselves not to and the reasons why they shouldn't. People out there who I bet you are artists, people are entrepreneurs, people are thinking, oh, I should sell my paintings. I should sell my art that I'm designing. I should sell this T-shirt. I should, and who are just sitting there saying, but who's going to buy it? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? When we, when we started this podcast, we never oh, once yeah. said to each other, well, who's going to listen to us? I well, I'm listening to Richard and Richard's listening to me. That's all we care about. Yeah. Dave, you have a great voice. <laughs> you have a great face for radio. <laughs> I do. I do have a great face for radio. But Dave, it goes back to like even our guests. So I I was up at Cheeky Mamas. For those yep. who don't know what Cheeky Mamas is, oh, I was there the God. other week. Oh, the butter tarts are so butter good. tarts. Nadia and Harley, yeah. the two most sweetest people. Harley's like, Richard, I listen to you guys every week. I literally, Dave, I was blushing. I'm like, really? You guys are lit, like, you know, because you're, you know, you yeah. don't put it in perspective, right? That's right. We had them at the very beginning of our show. I think within the first 12 episodes, they opened up a bakery, a butter tart, a sweet tart. Oh, so good. Up at, just outside Midland, Honey yeah. Harbor, Victoria Harbor area. And they did it in the middle of the pandemic. Yep. Talk about fear. Right. They just said, fuck it. <laughs> We're going to do it. That's right. And they opened it. And the but like you bring the butter tarts to family occasions, you bring them to friends that brought them to neighbors. Yeah, people just don't stop talking about how delicious they are. They took action, which is, ties into our show. Got to dream bigger, make waves, take action in that order. Yeah, because they dreamt of something. They didn't let fear get in their way. They fucking tackled the waves of the ocean, and then they took action on it. Yeah, and. Their success story is an example of that. And it goes with all the other guests we've had on the show who goes, yeah, well, I had this idea. I started and I just said, fuck it, I'm doing it. This is what you have to do. You, 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 you got to just learn. You have to train your mind uh, and recognize when that fear is hitting you. Because Dave and I were talking of obstacles. Listen, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. There are certain things I'm like, holy shit, how are we going to do this? But it's talking through these things with people and understanding the pros, the cons, the middle, and then how you're going to tackle it head on and just go forward. Yeah. People are doing things. And that goes back to what I said earlier. People have done things that you would like to do or experience. You can leave the nine yeah. to five. You can joint venture. You can start a business. You can mm -hmm. do something you've always wanted to do. Go back and listen to Harley and Nadia's podcast. They doubted themselves Mm -hmm. Because they're like, who's going to show up to our shop? Mm -hmm. The day they opened, yeah, they had a lineup 
around the corner. They had no choice but to open. They almost ran out of food, ran out of uh, butter, butter tarts. Dave, when when we were there just two weeks ago, we got the last eight (laughs) butter tarts. And that wasn't enough for what we needed them for because they were sold out. It wasn't even noon hour. Gone. Done. Sorry. Like. Yeah. It's incredible. You don't know until you try. And and I think I think we also feel the judging of what if you fail? I think that's the other biggest part too because failure, yeah. Fail yeah. it's the failure part like oh what if I get fail and the judging and I have those same, kind of same things but I don't let myself think about that. It's like fuck it, who cares? Yeah. I don't care. I'm just going to go attempt it. We're going to get the business going. So I want to take a step back. I was talking to a neighbor, very successful business owner. I want to get him on the show. We we've talked about it. Um, and, uh, he goes, well, okay, so you're opening your, your franchise in the U S you know, what if have you planned for the, what if, and I'm like, no, I don't care because I'm not going to let that consume my life. We know we're going to be successful. We have our business and our marketing plans. We have the right teams and people supporting us. It's mm-hmm. the right type of model for this market. I'm not going to worry about the what ifs because that's going to hold me back. And I don't want it to hold me back. I don't right. want that to be the concrete block that's going to hold me to the bottom of the lake. I'm going to be up top. My Titanic's not sinking, Dave. There's well, no it's, icebergs. It's, it's the whole analogy of saving for a rainy day, right? Yes. Don't save for the rainy day. Just no. go out and enjoy the rain. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen those videos as kids on the driveway. doing. Like, yeah. Just enjoy the rain. It's going to rain. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can stop. The what ifs, what ifs, what ifs are out of your control. Yeah. If you consume your, what ifs. if My you God. consume yourselves with the what ifs, you are going to not move forward because you'll always be preventing yourself. You'll say, well, what if, what if just even in, in life, that's what I found. As soon as I say, what if I knock mm-hmm. myself because, because I'm stopping myself from doing something. Okay. The what ifs are you putting the thought into your brain that it may ha- it may not work. It may do this. It may do that. Yeah. Deal with it as it comes. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Just deal with it as it comes. Yeah. Don't um, don't overthink this. And I think as we conclude, Dave, you had a great question. Ask. Let us know what that that fear is. Right. Yeah. Talk about it. We we maybe that could be a topic for discussion. We could break it down. But your action item today is think of the worst case, think of the best case, find the middle ground, and then break down what you want to accomplish into steps and watch how the fear disappears. Yeah. You know, for some people, it could be as simple as, like I said, going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll get your gym clothes on. (laughs) Yeah. Drive to the gym. Next step. Walk in the gym. (laughs) That's right. And find a piece of weight because everyone else there is not judging you. They're all focused on themselves. You need to focus on yourself too. That's right. Dave. Good point. Where? Can we find you? Find me at Stretch Lab. Yes. That's where we'll be in the process of opening. You'll find me at 410 Adelaide Street. Not yet. Want to offer any updates? Anything to share? Exciting? We are in the process of starting construction. We are going to be selling memberships coming up in the next week or two. And we'll do some pop-up events. So if you want a free stretch. Mm. So if you live in Toronto or if you want to commute down to Toronto for a free stretch, 15-minute free stretch. Go on to the stretchlab.com website, find our location, sign up for interest. One of our peeps will reach out to you and sign you up and let you know where we're going to be doing our pop-up events or just follow us on Instagram, Toronto, Stretch Lab Toronto downtown. Follow us on Instagram. You'll see where we're doing our pop-ups. Come on by. You'll get a free stretch. Say hi to us. Say hi to the employees and it will change your life. Mm-hmm. Stretching is very important for another episode. Don't we'll talk about fear. Get a stretch. It, that's it. That's it. But you can find me there, or you'll find uh, you'll find me on Instagram, David A. Moskowitz, or LinkedIn. How about you, Rich? Where are we gonna find you? Yes. Before we get there, I need to plug our two real estate opportunities. I have to because I keep forgetting to mention this. Yes. Our flips that became burrs. We right. need two partners on one or both properties. Okay. So if you have your T4s together, their steady income or T4As, that'd be great. Uh, and you're coming in. The market's crazy right now. Purchasing price, interest rate, stuff's a mess right now. But if you can partner with somebody who owns the property, it's a private sale we're making. 
uh, we need to get off title. So if you're looking to come in and partner with us on a buy and hold, we have two opportunities. So if you understand that stuff and want to know more, please reach out. Um, I'm back on Twitter. Oh, I used it a lot in my previous you life. Did you nice. find me? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so I was no, like, no, oh, I was going to say, no, no, say no, no, that's, that's, a, that's a new <laughs> new platform for you. Fantastic. It's a new platform. And I think I want to kind of share the thoughts out there because there's been so much, cha- there's so much change. I love Elon, you know, yeah. like I, I love Fair Uncle enough. Elon. He's great. And um, the timing was just kind of perfect. It was coincidental. So it's Richard underscore Dibiase. You can find all those links on my linked tree, which is in Instagram at Richard Dibiase, also on LinkedIn. Thanks. So please connect with us. Dave, we have a Facebook page. We're launching another LinkedIn page. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So just find us on our, I think our Instagram pages are as best. So Richard DiBiase for me, hit the LinkedIn. Everything's there. If you want to connect, please share, please review the show. Please let us know your questions. We'd love to have more feedback and, uh, and, and go from there. We have a guest coming up next. Uh, Daniel, I'm looking forward to having him on the show. Uh, has a startup and he's been phenomenal with the 75 heart as well. So there'll be a lot of common topics to discuss and somebody who did not live in fear. So if you're living in fear, you need to dream bigger, make waves and take action. There you go. We'll talk to you on our next episode.